Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, uh, we will, based on the fact we lost some time this morning and we have the health and wellness service team following up today with some of their work, we'll try and fly through this uh, COVID-19 update. There is a lot, so we'll do our best. And I'll start with Public Health Director Kathy Hedin. Thank you, County Manager O'Connor, and thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. We will go over to the dashboard for the current COVID situation update for Minnesota and Ramsey County. In Minnesota, 61,516 people have tested positive for COVID-19. That's an additional uh, 4,956 since last week. Total cases requiring hospitalization is 5,606. Hospitalized as of yesterday is 320 in our state and 159 in the ICU. Both of those continue to trend upward. Unfortunately, 1,702 people have died from COVID, an additional 46 deaths in the last week across the state. Over to our Ramsey County data, uh, we now have had 7,720 people who have tested positive uh, in Ramsey County, uh, an increase of 766 positive cases over the last week. Total cumulative cases requiring hospitalization, hospitalization in our county is 963, with 294 who have been in the ICU. And unfortunately, 271 people have lost their lives to COVID. That's seven additional deaths in the last week. The next graph that you see, uh, if we scroll down just to the next one, you see that we flipped the data. So now that uh, you can see that the newer data is now on the left and you, don't, you no longer have to slide to the right to see the new uh, daily cases. Uh, to go down to the demographic data, we currently, of the 7,720 cases, 33% have been white, 21% Asian, 21% black, 13% unknown, 10% other, 1% multiracial, and American Indian is now up to 1% of the total cases. Uh, under ethnicity, we're at 16% for Hispanic. And if we look at the ages, uh, we are over 60% of the total cases in Ramsey County are younger than 44 years of age. So we continue to look at that data. If we scroll down, you'll now also see along with our city data, uh, you also see zip code map. Um, we are keeping an eye on zip codes 55106, 117, 119, and 55104. Uh, they, they continue to be of highest concern. This is where we are focusing a lot of our outreach and testing uh, currently. As we go down, we also have some new information that we provided beyond the, the death information on our data dashboard. And we continue to update this data as we get it available to us from the Minnesota Department of Health. You can now find the number of COVID-19 tests performed each week in Ramsey County. Um, you'll see there that uh, it's been uh, pretty high with almost 10,000 uh, each week. You'll also see the weekly positivity rate, which for Ramsey County is 6.3%. Minnesota sitting at 5%, Hennepin County and Dakota County both at 7%, and Washington County is at 4%. Um, as well as uh, we can see the weekly case rate, which is now at 105 for Ramsey County. The additional information from schools, we continue to work with the Minnesota Department of Ed and Minnesota Department of Health to break down so that we can um, utilize that data and put it on our dash dashboard for our schools. The two-week case rate per 10,000 people in Ramsey County, which is the metric used for schools for the learning model decisions, which is in-person, hybrid, and distance models, updated last week is now at 19.65 uh, for Ramsey County. That puts Ramsey County school districts very close to the hybrid learning model for all grades. The total approximate number of completed tests in the state is 1,172,118. Remember that you can get this information from our data dashboard by going to www.ramseycounty.us slash coronavirus. I'll just give one update about the testing events that we had this weekend. As you know, we had our first two testing events this past weekend at Aldrich Arena and Washington Tech, and we'll continue to provide testing at these two sites for all weekends the month of August. 
1,157 people were tested over a two-day, eight-hour period. We're so grateful to both the Ramsey County Outreach Team uh, and to the, that of our partners at Karen Organization of Minnesota, Hmong American Partnership, and the Hmong Healthcare Professionals Coalition, our staff and interpreters who speak Hmong, Karen, and Spanish stayed very busy. In addition to testing, education was also provided about patient education, what to expect during the contact tracing process, census, and financial assistance services. This successful weekend of testing couldn't have been done without the help of our uh, partners of M Health Fairview, the State Emergency Operations Center, Testing Group, Ramsey County Medical Reserve Corps, Ramsey County Park and Rec, St. Paul Public Schools, and our Ramsey County Communications team. Demand is high in these zip codes, as you just uh, could see from the zip code map that we showed you. We've scheduled 3,400 appointments for the month of August. The State Testing Center will be providing us with more testing kits as we have exceeded the expectation for the number of needed tests in our area. Um, I'm extremely proud of the dedicated team and staff uh, and volunteers who have made this weekend a, a success, and I look forward to sharing more information like demographics and positivity rates the next time we meet. Um, as we work to accommodate the walk-up and drive-up demands, we do recommend registering for appointments. Saturdays, uh, again, August 15th, 22nd, and 29th at Aldrich Arena from 2 to 6 p.m., and then Sunday testing will be August 16th, 23rd, and 30th, uh, 2 to 6 p.m. as well at Washington Technology Magnet. Thanks for the opportunity to provide you with another update this week. I'll turn it back over to County Manager O'Connor. Thank you, Director Hadeen. Madam Chair, members, I have a number of updates I'll just run through quickly on various topics. County of, Manager? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my, my apologies, please. Coming off mute, I do need to call for a question on Commissioner Reinhardt prior to continuing. Commissioner Reinhardt? Thank you, Madam Chair. I did hear from uh, Senator Fong Kerr this weekend during the Aldrich event, or the testing at Aldrich Arena, and, um, and I understand that we did um, actually run out of tests because there was such a, a demand for it. I know that, and the big concern that he raised with me was the fact that because um, people were encouraged to uh, pre-register, but um, it wasn't required, and, and I, that's an important part of this, but some people were then um, there and not able to get the testing done, or some people were turned away, uh, probably because they were out of tests, I'm not sure. But I do think that um, we need to really um, ask that people, it, it's, it's recommended and strongly recommended that you pre-register so that we have a better feel for what is happening there. Again, it's not required, uh, but I think that that's very important. And the message that it sends to the community, if they come and expect that they can get this done and they can't, it's very upsetting to folks. And so um, he wanted to make sure, and I'm uh, passing this along, that um, you know, sometimes the price of success is that you get um, such an overwhelming response, but we need to try to figure out how to make sure that we can um, balance those needs so that folks aren't feeling like they are gonna be turned away. So I wanted to bring that up, and I know that, uh, the, uh, that Kathy Hadeen um, talked about that as well, but I think it's important. I'm glad we're getting more tests. But I hope that people will pre-register um, and know that we really want to make sure that we get everyone tested and people show up at these events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. I'm sure that our health director would underscore that point as well. I wanted to just check if you had anything additional to say about that. Madam Chair, Director Commissioner, Commissioner Reinhardt, thank you for that point. Uh, it's a Unfortunately, a good problem to have, right? Uh, we did an amazing amount of outreach and, and really targeted the outreach to ensure that people who need tests could get them, and that is who showed up early. I believe they went through 230 uh, test kits in a half hour. 
um, for walk-ups. And so we have communicated that to the State Emergency Operations Center. They are impressed by the amount of outreach that took place and will be supplying us with more testing kits as that's where they come from. We did emphasize the next day uh, that we try to stick to registrations only, but the, the reality is we're trying to make this as no barrier as possible, and by doing that, we, we really need to be able to accommodate people who show up and not, don't necessarily have access to online registration. Um, so we'll continue to adapt and make sure that we do our best not to turn people away. It pains us as well to do that, knowing that there's such big need in the community, but I thank you for the feedback. And thank you thank for you your very continuing much. efforts. Thank you very much uh, for your continuing efforts in that regard. And so we will go then to County Manager O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tomorrow, uh, there will be an initiative launched through different media channels called A Mask for Everyone. It's been the work of the Racial Equity and Community Engagement Response Team with the Equity Action Circle that prioritizes distributing homemade cloth masks to racially, ethnically, and div culturally diverse communities where there's been concern about the availability and wearing of masks. The goal, uh, each recipient will be provided with a homemade cloth mask to help slow the spread of COVID-19, accurate and up-to-date information about the importance of wearing a mask and instructions on how to use and care for that mask. Individuals and families in need of masks can visit ramseycounty.us slash a mask for everyone. All said together. It'll be on the website, it'll be there and available. Community groups and small businesses serving racially, ethnically, and culturally diverse communities can also request masks through the program to distribute. We'll distribute them until we run out. There's been thousands and thousands of masks that have been made as a part of this process, and we've engaged the community as a part of the mask making process as well. There are also donation boxes. If people have masks, that they would like to donate as a part of our Mask for Everyone effort. There are collection boxes available at the City Hall Ramsey County Courthouse on the 4th Street entrance size. It'll be an indoor box that's located. The Ramsey County Plato Building, the Ramsey County Government Center East. You would notice these are our Dropbox sites as well. Ramsey County Public Works Building, where we've had a site taking masks since the beginning of the pandemic, and Ujama Place. We're working on putting additional sites for donations available in the field as well as we go forward. And finally, um, donations could also be mailed over to 90 Plato Boulevard, that's the Plato office building, um, and that address is online to send in masks. So we're trying to take them in as many different ways as possible and ensure that everyone in this community has access to a mask and knows how to wear it. Uh, yesterday, I received a uh, an update, the Minnesota Reformer, one of our media outlets, published an article um, in which our racial equity community engagement response team and our community partners were featured, talking about the work of the Trusted Messenger program, talking about the work of breaking through barriers that government can't break through alone. We will share that article with you as a follow-up to this in case you haven't seen it. It continues to underscore that community is going to tell the story on our response, um, whether or not we think it's the way we want it to be written, and I think this story shows that the efforts around specific engagement across racial and cultural communities is making a difference, and now that difference is being amplified through means of media that we would not be able to write on our own, and I want to thank the Minnesota Reformer for taking time to write that piece. Um, our preparedness plan, which is a part of all workplaces across the state under the governor's executive orders about reopening in many cases, and how do you ensure that your workplace is available to open in alignment with all the different public health and process guidelines that need to exist. I just wanted to let you know that our preparedness plan is up online at Ramsey County US on the four employees page to see the form that's being filled out. Departments are updating that information in real time as we go through our service delivery work, but a comprehensive rewrite of our entire organization's plan will be done um, by nine days from today, August 20th is the date to be exact. Um, we never closed, so we've been on a rolling basis of ensuring we follow public health guidance and plans as we go along. For some organizations, it was this plan that allowed them to then reopen. And so for us, it's been more about staying on top of public health guidance, but this preparedness plan brings it all into one place. It keeps us in compliance with the governor's orders, and it's also a way to bring comfort to residents and employees to understand the work that we're doing as we go forward. 
Our home meal delivery program that we've been discussing as we go forward has also launched, and that's the focus of today's From the County Manager column and video to the organization. Commissioner Ortega, who chairs that group, uh, is a part of the release coming out and talks about the work to date through the policy action group and everything else, and so he may have a few words that he wants to add here. I'll see in just a second. And the Food and Basic Needs Branch in our Incident Command has been working on this since the beginning. There are five home meal delivery partners who are announced as part of this piece, almost $2 million in meals through the end of 2020 to ensure that people, whether quarantining at home, whether they simply are unable to leave their house due to a disability that prevents them from being able to move about, or people who can't leave because they're concerned about contracting COVID and they're in high risk pools. Um, this program is set up to ensure that people can remain safe and continue to have their basic needs met for themselves and their families throughout the pandemic. It's a really exciting moment, and we're working with some new vendors who have never been in this space before with a focus on culturally, racially, linguistically accessible services that will meet people across this diverse community, and in many ways ties to your earlier conversation today about there is not one monolithic story or approach. It needs to be a multifaceted approach that welcomes all in this community as we write our story around our COVID response. Finally, we get asked questions um, Actually, Madam Chair, I'll pause on that one. Commissioner Ortega, is there anything you would like to add to that specific piece to the update on the um, home meal delivery from your perspective and work? Thank you very much. Commissioner Ortega? Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Brian. I just want to say, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Julie Kleinschmidt, who's leading our group. Uh, who's, uh, she's going to try uh, to going into retirement one more time, uh, but she'll be around in case we need her. But uh, Carissa Glatt uh, is taking the lead and uh, she did an excellent job at Friday's meeting. Uh, yes, we have put out five contracts that are culturally diverse and uh, do the things we talked about in terms of reaching uh, the community. Uh, we are looking for more folks from the Native American community and the Latinx community. Uh, so please pass the word on uh, to anybody that we, we still uh, doing outreach to see how we could go a little deeper in those communities. Uh, we've received many applications and uh, we'll continue to uh, uh, to process those as quickly as uh, possible. We will provide technical assistance. Uh, overall, the committee is moving, quite frankly, very seamless and in, uh, in, uh, moving forward. And I just wanna thank the, the staff for all the great work they've done. Uh, it continues to be a, uh, a work in progress, but we're doing the best we can. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. I'll, and uh, I appreciate the point of the rolling basis of the RFP is also important to note. This was set up to be able to receive additional partners and bring additional entities on board as we go. It was not a one-shot RFP process. And so as we find additional community partners, work with them to move into this space, this process will now enable that to happen seamlessly as we go forward. Um, my final update that I was about to transition to, we get asked a lot about how much has Ramsey County expended related to COVID-19. In our recent financial report, our obligated spends right now, year to date, now total approximately $50.9 million in the COVID-19 space. That's a mix of things related to CARES Act funding and things not related to it. Uh, $7.5 million in payroll expenses as we track that, for example, would be a part of that 50 million. But it gives you a general sense of the scope and scale. I always like to tie it to our largest department is slightly under $60 million in Ramsey County. So since the onset of the pandemic, we've basically run a largest department in Ramsey County response now in about a six month period. Um, and we have a lot more to come. Um, but it gets to the sense and scale of the response, and we can talk more about that in weeks ahead or if you have questions now. But in the interest of time, Madam Chair, I will stand with Director Hadeen for any questions. Thank you very, very much. And for just reflecting what a large response this has been. And we have been able to observe that people in Ramsey County leadership together with our community 
have really focused together to get this done and that we continue in that regard. Thank you to Commissioner Ortega in particular for the work around food and basic needs. Are there questions uh, to come before us at this time? Commissioner Reinhardt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it is important to, for people to understand how much additional work there has been taking place and the staff and, oh my gosh, the um, incredible volunteer system. I mean, everything that we have in place here has allowed us to not shut down, but to open in different ways and to make sure that people felt um, that they know that, that they are valued and we're gonna try to do everything that we can. Um, I was in a meeting last night um, that um, people were thanking us for the work that we had done with the libraries and, and just acknowledging the fact that knowing that it is there um, and that there is a way to get what they need was such a comfort to people across our county. And so, yes, it's different, but um, it's being recognized that we are really trying to make sure that we're reaching out and meeting the needs. I also was uh, last night um, on the Maplewood City Council um, where they were considering the Perkins and Will uh, community outreach uh, uh, project regarding um, well, they call it the ponds, but it's actually much more than the ponds. It's uh, the properties that we have in South Maplewood. Um, and even there, recognizing that there are so many things that we have been working on um, that have had to uh, take a back seat. And everybody understands that. So I, I just want you to know that I thank them for their patience. I mean, we were supposed to kick this off in March of 2020. Well, <laughs> we all know what happened in March of 2020. and so. Um, so things are, you know, they're delayed. Um, and you look everywhere across this county and there are things that people really care about and they know that we care about them. Uh, but they've been delayed. And so we deal with that. Um, but if we hadn't made that pivot when we did, um, we would not be able to move forward even now with all of these other things. So that was just one example of um, how the community, our, our communities, our constituents have also tried to say, okay, we know that this, whatever it is, isn't as critical as our response to COVID. Um, and we understand that. We don't want to let, we, we're not going to not do things. But um, the recognition of that, I think, is pretty impressive across our county, our partners, the cities, the township, um, the Nonprofits. I mean, everybody is is coming together because of the way we have um, set this up. So I just wanted to say thank you um, and uh, kudos to staff. Um, it's just been absolutely incredible, and to the commissioners, to this board, the amount of work that we have put in um, day and night <laughs> um, has been um, really um, pretty. It's been awesome, and so. I, I just wanted to recognize that. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. Commissioner Manis Castillo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to echo uh, Commissioner Reinhardt's comments and gratitude to the staff as well. You know, between the, the remote testing and the work that has been organized very quickly to get lots of volunteers and people through there, uh, to Kathy Hadeen's help, I know as it, you know, fall is approaching and school districts are making decisions, she's been working with her staff and team with our charter schools, and I've heard some great comments from school board members of those charter schools as well and the and the real careful consideration to help them make decisions about planning and strategy and so I just wanted to say uh, with tremendous gratitude thank you to Kathy specifically and her entire team that have really been working and as Commissioner Reinhardt said, you know, there, the work continues. And so we have gotten really creative. Um, many of you know, I, I'm i not just a commissioner, but you know, I'm uh, someone who receives county services for my adult son who is developmentally delayed. And the team over at FAS, if he's in a stage of life where he's aging out of his residence, have been working through COVID, uh, through all of the, the hoops to find 
uh, placement for him. And it's just really been amazing the amount of work that has been done and people are working really well. And so I just wanted to say thank you to all the staff uh, and the work and the adjustment as we continue to move through this. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Maris Castillo. I do not have other hands up. I'll go back to County Manager Hunter. Oh, and I'm um, sorry, Commissioner Mary Jo McGuire. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to not let it go, uh, not let it go unsaid uh, how much I appreciate also the work that's being done. I, w I went and uh, did early voting at our library yesterday at the Ramsey County Library in Roseville, and they were set up so efficiently, so well done. And then um, also there were also people waiting in line for the computers that are there for Workforce Solutions. And so that program is alive and well, and people were so appreciative of the opportunity to, you know, have a computer, go online, look for jobs. And then uh, while they were doing that, we were voting in another section, and, and the library is open, not, not open, but it, people can come and pick up their materials there as well. So our libraries as resource centers are really doing amazing work. And uh, people were really just so appreciative of, of that opportunity to still use access services in that way. And I just want to give another shout out to the drop-offs for absentee ballots. People have really appreciated that they can fill their ballots out and then bring them to a drop-off to a, to a, a drop at, a, at a site. And then they don't have to worry about whether the mail is going to get there or not, and they didn't, still don't have to go inside. So I uh, have just appreciated all the creativity that we're uh, using to help our residents with the services. And just while I'm on the topic, remind people it's primary day. They can vote on, in their regular locations now, not in our, our library, because that was early voting, but to vote in their regular locations today um, as, a, as, a civic, uh, as a civic opportunity and, and responsibility. So. Thank you for letting me uh, uh, thank our thank our employees for their great work. Absolutely. All right, I will return then to County Manager O'Connor. Thanks, Madam Chair. On Commissioner McGuire's point there at the end, today is primary election day. I wanna thank all our election staff. We had a number of staff volunteer from across the organization as well oh. to be a part of this process due to the influx of absentee ballots being cast, it's in oper we have plans upon plans upon plans we're working through to ensure um, an effective, transparent, accountable election. And it, you don't have to look far to read about all the different challenges that the influx of mail-in voting has, but we're confident that we're gonna pass today's test with flying colors as we build towards the general election. And our sites are open and voting is happening, um, pandemic or no pandemic, in a safe way here today. Um, also on the census side, I'll give more of an update next week. There's been a lot happening around the census. Um, news that we would likely view as unfortunate in terms of increasing the challenges of ensuring everyone gets counted since the date for the Census Bureau concluding its counting operations was moved up by a month. Um, under the auspices of the pandemic being the reason, although many would argue that the pandemic should actually move the date back instead. So I would just put on the record that through the Complete Count Committee, um, there's been obviously consternation about that rationale being cited as the reason why. Um, and so there continues to be a lot of work happening. Door counting begins in Ramsey County this week, and so any opportunity you have to continue to push that is important. And while not directly only to COVID, it's important in a moment of COVID that we mention the census. Finally, two things I just have to mention before we end. Also, we have been in dialogue with our school districts, had a meeting last Wednesday with public health and all our public school districts. Um, there have been charter conversations, as Commissioner Modest Castillo mentioned, also happening. And the schools are doing a great job of trying to figure out impossible circumstances as well. And I just want to acknowledge that the guidelines from the state are both helpful, but not um, all directive in terms of the decisions that each local district needs to make. And I want to applaud our superintendents and their entire teams for the work happening to figure out a path forward. We're meeting again um, this Thursday uh, as a part of that process as well. And um, we're continuing to meet with them now as an ongoing dialogue to ensure that information is available. And finally, I'll leave you on a real happy note. Uh, first meeting of the day yesterday was with our navigators who are staff from across this organization who have become managers or 
frontline navigators or customer support specialists as a part of the vision for our next phase of opening that we've talked about with all of you through two workshops about a month ago. Their orientation day was yesterday. And uh, in the coming weeks, we're gonna launch the new navigator model. And we're gonna learn a lot over the next six months while it remains in a temporary role as we ramp up towards the permanent long-term status. But the room of folks that I was having an opportunity to spend a few minutes with yesterday, I just want to tell you, you have wonderful leadership at all levels, stepping up and raising their hand to be a part of serving this community and being a part of bringing that complexity onto ourselves to alleviate some of the complexity that otherwise residents face when they walk in our doors. And it's a challenge. And the, the, the coronavirus expands and exacerbates that challenge, but it was one that's existed far before this as well. And um, I just want to give a special shout out to those navigators and everyone who's worked on this model, to all of you for the feedback. Can't wait to talk about it more. We'll make some sites available. We'll figure out a safe way to show more of what those sites look like as they open up in the model. But I will end on that point, Madam Chair. Thank you very, very much. I need to double check. I do have electronic cans still raised, but I don't think that they're real. So I'll give you a moment to put them down or leave them up as should be. Um, reiterating the many thanks that have gone out to our staff and to staff who have during this incredible emergency period also been working to normalize the day-to-day -day and regular support. You know, as I see the um, immense work that is happening, focused on services to ensure that we're up and running and that people are able to get real service from us during even this emergency, and I know the intense efforts that are taking place at the same time focused on the emergency. I just have to continue to applaud and reiterate our thanks to staff who are making it look like business as usual, uh, but enhanced, while we know that nothing is usual or normal at this point in time. So thank you for their extra efforts, for their going beyond business as usual to learn from this period and to implement those things which work better for all of us. I do see two hands still raised, and so I am going back to call on Commissioner McGuire and Commissioner Maris Castillo. Commissioner McGuire? Madam Chair, I'm not sure what you're seeing. I okay. lowered my hand, so gotcha. thank you. Yeah, maybe I, I just have to refresh or something. Yeah, maybe thank refresh, you. but thank is you, Madam Chair, for thank you for checking back. I appreciate it. <laughs> Commissioner Maris Castillo, is the same true? Uh, okay, yeah, my screen just shows it. All right. So I may have difficulty seeing hands in the future then because that's <laughs> the two I have up. I will uh, just say thank you for the update.